Welcome to This Week in Hastings Headline History, where we take a look back at what was making news in Hastings, Florida over a century ago. These are stories directly out of the pages of the Hastings Herald, which was published weekly in the early 1900s. So sit back and enjoy as I share with you a few of the stories from this week in January 1920. Red Raids at Jacksonville One arrest was made and a quantity of literature seized by Department of Justice agents in a raid on the reputed headquarters of the Communist Party in Jacksonville. Abe Wiseman, 30 years of age, a Russian who had a membership card for the Communist Party in his possession, was arrested at his home by deputies. The literature, which included the Charter, Minute Book, and other papers, were found in the home of J.A. Adams, who was a machinist in the employ of Merrill Stevens Shipbuilding Corporation. The raid was in connection with the nationwide crusade launched by the Department of Justice to round up all radicals in the United States. And at an early hour today, deputies were still abroad in the city searching for members of the Communist Party here. At that hour, it was not known how many members are located in Jacksonville, as apparently there was no membership role among papers seized at the home of Adams on East 8th Street. The paper seized, however, indicates there is a regularly organized branch of the party in the city. Deep Creek Development Proposition Likely to be Completely Abandoned According to all present indications, the Deep Creek Development Proposition has fallen by the wayside and is on the direct road toward being completely abandoned. Not only has the dredge ceased to work, but the engineering corps of the War Department has announced that the funds appropriated for the work are exhausted. The whole trouble seems to be that the wrong kind of dredge was put on the job and that it started something it couldn't finish. As the matter now stands, the creek has been well improved from the channel of the river to the present point of operation. Apparently, however, the hardest part of the job has yet to be finished. And for that work, a powerful dipper dredge is required. As there is no such dredge available, and as the funds appropriated for the work and more besides have been exhausted, it seems quite evident Hastings is not to get a means of water transportation at an early date unless some other method is found. For some time, however, the possibility of construction of a dock on the St. John's River has been discussed. The site desired, though never before available, was the old logging place just south of the Maze Swamp near Graveyard Branch on a direct line with the Palatka-Hastings Road where it turns toward Federal Point. A dock and warehouse placed there would be approximately two miles from Hastings but with brick road connections. The land is owned by D.H. Peck. Mr. Peck appeared in a very receptive frame of mind when approached on the subject. With this proposition open, the local people apparently have an opportunity to turn from the Deep Creek failure without great loss and to seize a far greater opportunity, which can be developed and put into operation long before the Deep Creek dock could have become available for use. Not only that, but with a dock on the St. John's River, Hastings would have access to the shipping facilities of the big river boats, which would not have ascended the creek, but which will make regular runs up and down the river, carrying both freight and passengers. Milk Depot is established by Hastings Cold Storage Company. A decidedly welcome innovation has been made in this town in the form of a milk depot, established by the Hastings Cold Storage Company in its retail market. The milk offered for sale is of an exceedingly high quality, coming from the farm of F.E. Bugby, where is operated one of the finest and most sanitary dairies in Florida. As the depot has been established largely as a convenience to the local public, and in recognition of many requests from local people that they be allowed to buy milk, the cold storage company has found it essential to place certain restrictions on the sale of milk. To prevent the handling of surplus milk and the waste which would necessarily result, only sufficient milk to take care of the needs of regular customers will be handled. All persons desiring to buy milk from the depot will be required to give a definite order for a certain amount each day. Customers will also be required to furnish their own containers as no bottled milk will be handled at the depot. In order to ensure the purity of the milk, however, a bottling machine has been installed from which milk will be run directly into cans or bottles brought by customers without being exposed to the danger of dust or other matter dropping into it, as would be the case if it were kept in cans from which milk must be dipped. Furthermore, the bottling machine is equipped with a mechanical agitator, which keeps the milk stirred up, prevents cream from forming on top of the bulk milk, and ensures a proper amount of fat or cream with each unit of milk sold. 
Establishing of this depot will undoubtedly prove of great benefits to local people in general, for of late, there has been no place in town where milk could be purchased. The result has been that not only people who desired milk for their own tables, but also many who needed it for babies or invalids have been put to inconvenience. The establishment of a regular supply of high-grade milk is an event for which Hastings can consider itself fortunate. Seven through trains in each direction daily. It is doubtful if there are many single main lines of railroad in the United States successfully and safely caring for more and heavier traffic than does the Florida East Coast Railway during the winter months. Commencing Monday, January 5th, the new full winter schedule went into effect and there are busy times ahead for all branches of the service on the Flagler system. To the uninitiated, there naturally comes a feeling of wonder that so many trains can be handled over a single line of track and under schedules that call for speed and the greatest degree of real service. Repairing Bridge A group of convicts is at work making slight but much needed repairs on Deep Creek Bridge. Now planks are being laid to fill in the worst holes and some of the most obvious defects are being remedied. If they stay long enough to put in new framework, new stringers, new uprights and new floor planks, the bridge may be in fair condition for a while. Dutton Company Moves The E.F. Dutton Company, potato merchant, has moved its local office from the Bird Building to the newly renovated building which was formerly occupied by the telephone exchange. The building has been entirely refinished inside and has been put in shape for a first-class modern office. Opens Jewelry Shop G.C. Garner, who operated a jewelry shop in Hastings several years ago, has returned to the city from Alexander City, Alabama and reopened his former place of business. Mr. Garner has established his shop in the Killingsworth Building, where he has engaged in the repairing of watches, clocks, jewelry, and similar articles. He is also an expert gunsmith and has established a gun repair in the branch. He plans to later lay in a stock of watches and jewelry and to conduct a retail jewelry business. New Signs A painter has been at work for several days repainting the Do Not Park signs in the center of town. The new signs are lettered black on silver background, the background being outlined with red. I hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Hastings Headline History. This podcast was brought to you by Presenting the Past, bringing history back to the present through historic presentations and the sale of treasures from days gone by. This episode was written and produced by me, Michelle Morello, with the aid of vintage copies of the Hastings Herald. Now it's time for this week's musical memory when we listen back to a song that everyone was listening to over a hundred years ago. This week's musical memory is a song that was popular at the end of 1919 and the beginning of 1920. It's a man who started his career in opera, but transitioned into being a big name on the popular music charts. Charles Harrison is another one of those tenor voices that stood out, thus the reason he was so popular on the operatic stage. But he really found a strong following when he switched to popular music, recording a number of hits in the 19-teens and 20s. He even kept music in the family. By marrying Beula Gaylord Young, another recording artist, the two of them performed regularly on the Ever Ready Hour. While many of the musicians we talk about on musical memories faded out in the 1920s, Charlie kept dabbling into the musical scene all the way up until 1950 when, at the age of 75, he made a record called Charlie Harrison Sings Again. This week from 1919, here's Charles Harrison with Dreaming of Home Sweet Home. One by one, the shades of night are creeping all along. Silent watch I'm keeping, gazing in the campfire's flickering glow, dreaming of the loved ones that I know. First of all, I can see my mother, and her head is bending low, while my daddy holds her hand, tries to make her understand, it was best for her boy to go. Then the girl with a heart that's longing, will be true though her sweet heart may roam. Oh, how real they seem in the 